After 120 games, 351 goals and a couple of heartbreaking VAR decisions, just four teams remain in the run-in for the Champions League. Fitting then that we've made the short hop across to Liverpool, home of the original Fab Four and one of the favourites for this year's trophy. The words, you never walk alone, so often heard echoing through these streets, but for the next 60 seconds at least, we're going to ignore that wisdom. It's montage time. Liverpool is the UK's most successful footballing city, with 27 domestic top flight titles. The Liverbird has become synonymous with the red side of the city, but it was first adopted by Everton in 1891. Famous fans of the Reds include Daniel Craig, LeBron James and Dr Dre, who once referred to Patrick Berger as the bomb. Since Jurgen Klopp's appointment as manager in October 2015, the Reds haven't lost a single two-legged European tie. That's a record Klopp will be looking to extend against Barcelona as Liverpool aim to make their second final in as many seasons. Which brings us conveniently on to this week's guest. Harry Kuehl has played in two finals for Liverpool in 2005 and 2007. We'll be taking a look behind the curtain of that very famous night in Istanbul in just a little bit. But first, let's see what the Wizard of Oz thinks of this year's final four. Liverpool have already beaten PSG, Napoli, Bayern, Porto in this Champions League campaign. Do you think they can go a step further and beat Barcelona? I think it's going to be a big test. Look, let's not beat around the bush. You stop Messi, you stop Barcelona at the end of the day. He is the world's best and he's able to just produce something and can just turn a tide at any given moment. And Mo Salah, he's been compared to Messi over the last couple of seasons now. Who would you prefer to be by your side in this semi-final? I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Liverpool fan. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan, but I'm not going to sit here and lie. You've got to have the, the greatest in yeah. your team. It's got to have to be Messi. On the point of huge players, uh, Suarez and Coutinho come back to Anfield. Now, you spent many important years at Leeds. You went back, you played them, you scored against them. What's that like as a player to, to go up against the team you shared so much affinity with? There's, there's no question about it. 100% they'd want to score. And if they could score a hat-trick, they'd score a hat-trick. And if they could be the best player on the park, they're going to want to do it. I don't think you're going to get any boos or anything like that. I think you're going to get applause, but I guarantee they're going to want to score. It's down to Liverpool now, this, this new team, you know, to show the old champions of Barcelona that there's a new team up and coming and show the world now that this is a new way of playing football. Absolutely, and uh, Jürgen Klopp, he seems to have maybe got the same kind of team spirit going that Rafa Benitez had with your Liverpool side in 2005. How important do you think that togetherness is at this stage in the competition? It's huge. Truthfully, if you're winning games and you're in the biggest com competitions, players love it. You know, it's not really hard to go into Liverpool now and say, guys, you can win the Premier League. I win, and also you could go to the, the final of the Champions League for the second year running. Players are gonna are, are gonna want to be in there, and they're, they're only a couple of games away from not winning anything as well. So it could be a season of nightmares as well. I don't think we can be at this stage in the competition and not mention last year's final and how important that experience will be at this stage of Barcelona and hopefully going forward. At that point there, Liverpool, I hate to say it, but they were like a one-man team. I don't think so this year. Mane stepped up, Firmino stepped up, you know, these other players are stepping up now, so they are more well-equipped to deal with, with this Barcelona team. And if they progress, the chances of playing Spurs or Ajax in, in the next one is, whoa, that's, that's good. Spurs, Ajax, that is the other side of the draw. Who would you be most worried about? Well, I, I, I watched Ajax. It kind of reminds me of the young Leeds team I played in, mm. where fearless, young, yeah. wanted to play football, weren't scared, could mix it up, happy to happy to stick a foot in, happy to play teams off the park. I know there's a lot of talk of that the team kind of breaking up, so they're going to want to go out on a kind of legendary kind of status for, for Ajax as well. So Spurs without Kane, tough. 
but Sun's been producing at the moment and I think he's a fantastic player. I think Ajax is going to control the game, but I think Spurs with their counter-attack could possibly get through. Harry, let's take you back to 2005 and that night in Istanbul. But before we get to the game itself, what goes through your mind when you see that team sheet in a massive final? Going up against that team there, we were quite confident that we would have taken them 1v1. I've never been afraid of any player, any team. For me, Ronaldo, Zidane, no fear. Of course, we can't ignore 23 minutes in, 1-0 down, you were sadly forced off by an injury before this miraculous uh, comeback that we all know so well. Does that mean you look back at that match with mixed emotions? Or are you able to celebrate in the, the achievement that you all did together? you got to think from a, a young boy coming from Australia, this is probably the biggest game that I was ever going to be able to play in. To be honest with you, I knew, well, we, we knew that there was a problem with my groin and we knew that at any given moment throughout the whole year, it could, it could go. And I remember Benitez coming up and I was walking with Gibraltar Cissé. He says, okay, you're starting. I said, perfect. I actually felt confident in the game and, and, and I felt good. And that, that, that dreaded moment came when um, I had a tackle with Gattuso. And I remember just as soon as I went for it, my whole groin just snapped. I remember going off and disappointed, you know. I was hurt because like I said, it was the biggest game of my life. And uh, I was sitting on the bench actually with um, Steve Finnan. We both had ice packs sitting there, just waiting, and, and we could hear roars and all that. And I remember the doc come running in, and he goes, we just scored. So we went, ah, oh, 3-1. I said, ah, oh, okay, that's not bad. And next minute he's come running in again. He goes, you wouldn't believe it, we just scored again. We've gone, no way, it's 3-2. He goes, oh, well, it's game on. And I think in about two or, two or three minutes, he's come running back in, and he's just gone, oh my God, we've just got a penalty. Well, then me and Steve Finnan just ripped our ice bags off like that, put our tracksuits on and ran out and we just got uh, Alonso picking up the second ball going in for three all in. We watched the whole game there with uh, the team and what I saw my team do that night was remarkable. Thank you very much for those lovely stories. My pleasure. We're going to put your knowledge to the test in a little bit, but first it's time for a bit of retro magic from the guys at 8-Bit Football. Hi Harry, Duncan Alexander from Opta here. I want you to handle this quiz in the same way you used to handle Premier League fullbacks. Okay, that was our stats guru there. Duncan Alexander, he's going to ask you five questions. We can give you a clue to just one of them. If you need it, the score to match is Henrik Larsson with five. Your first five Premier League appearances all came at Ellen Road, but where did your first away appearance come? Was it Ewood Park or was it Villa Park? It's an easy one to remember because I know what happened at Ewood Park. I would say Ewood Park. What did happen at Ewood Park? I got sent it? off. You got sent off? Sadly not in your first away game though, that was at Villa Park. Was it? Oh. Question two. Name any of the players whose name contains a double L like yours to have scored more goals in the Premier League than you did. Oh, I'm just getting all those top goal scorers. Do you want your clue? Yeah, go on then. Two of them are Sunderland strikers. Oh, Phillips. You have a point on the board. Kevin Phillips, well done. I'm sweating, I'm sweating already. Oh, sweating for question, me? <laughs> question three. Name the defender who assisted two of your last four Premier League goals for Liverpool. Steve Finnan. Steve Finnan is the correct answer, two on the board. Next question, number four. You scored as many headed goals in the Premier League as big defenders Tony Adams and Neil Ruddock. Is that true or false? I would have to say, False. It's true. Really? It's true. I mean, Correct. that just went up for corners. You're doing yourself a disservice, Harry Kuhl. You appeared in two Champions League finals for Liverpool. Only eight players in the club's history have appeared in more European Cup finals than you did. Name just one of them. I, I, I feel like I'm going to say one, but then I'm just going to get laughed at. No, we don't laugh over here. Some really revered players at uh, Liverpool. Graham Souness. That is correct. Graham Souness with three. And that does put you third. Joint third, I must say, on our leaderboard. You can take that home and be proud of it. Uh, now, shortly, we'll see how Harry fares back out on the pitch in our 
penalty challenge. But first, let's see what our goal correspondents think of the semi-finals in Euro Express. With no Kane, Son or Sissoko, it's going to be a tough task for Tottenham against high-flying Ajax. That being said, I predict a 2-0 win for Spurs and a tight affair in the second leg. Besides the loss against Real Madrid, Ajax is now unbeaten in this season's Champions League. Facing Tottenham Hotspur without Son and Kane, I think they will do good in London playing 1-1. Then they finish it off in Amsterdam with a 2-1 victory. Ajax will go through to the final of the UEFA Champions League. I think Messi will make the difference and will turn Jurgen Klopp's dream into a nightmare. I am pretty sure Barcelona are going to show their best form against Liverpool and Messi and the rest of Lauranas will reach the Champions League final. It's the Premier League's meanest defence against the world's greatest footballer, but can Virgil van Dijk and co stop Lionel Messi? Liverpool are the last team to beat Barcelona in Camp Nou, and I believe if they can get away from there with a, a good result and take back to Anfield, I think home advantage could be key. I'm back in Liverpool to go through on aggregate 3-1. It's very easy to see who are the favourites in the semi-final Europa League clash, Chelsea versus Eintracht. Eintracht have not been in a semi-final since 1980 of European competition, whereas Chelsea have been in nine since Bramvich took over. It's Bundesliga versus Premier League. Anything can happen, and what a game we've got in store. penalties in your career. Um, do you think you can score any more against uh, that chap in the goal there? I, I would like to think so. Look at him! I, I know, I know. He's given it. He, he looks the part. Not, not, maybe not now, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Penalty number one. The normal penalty worth ten points. Harry, ready? Got it. Go penalty. Thank you. Thank you. Thought I'd get off to a clean start. I was just warming my eyes up. Were you? Yeah. Penalty two. The wrong foot penalty for 20 points. Oh! I put him off. I put him off with my movement. I changed my mind. The no look for 30 points. Harry? Ready? Oh. Still looking. I thought you said you could only put it the other way. Oh. Penalty four, the Rambona for 40 points. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Oh. Penalty five, the blindfolded penalty for 50 points. Serious business. Serious business. <laughs> Follow my voice. Tell me when you're ready. Follow my voice for the goal. Yep. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I mean, first person ever to score a blindfold penalty. High five for that one. Thank you very much. Johnny? You've absolutely rinsed me there, I'll be honest with you. You've rinsed me blindfolded. Not a lot of people can say that. 130 points on the board. You are now top of our leaderboard. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, you can take this little victory home with you, put it with all the rest of your I will athletes. do. I will do. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll go lick my wounds as we check out this week's fixtures. Tottenham and Ajax are first up in North London tomorrow night. And the Camp Nou beckons for Liverpool on Wednesday before the reverse fixtures in a week's time. Arsenal also meets Spanish opposition as Valencia visit the Emirates in the Europa League. And Eintracht Frankfurt host competition favourite Chelsea before they all do it again a week Thursday. Thanks 
again to Harry Kuehl for joining us. Now, the finishing line is very much in sight on the road to Madrid. Yeah, and we've got about 1,500 miles to cover yet, right? So, better get walking. Bye. Yeah.